In this video, we're going to have a look at proof by induction, but for inequalities. Now, there's a caveat in that this is only applicable to the OCR exam board for the OCR Further Maths A. So, unless you do OCR Further Maths A, um, then this is pretty irrelevant. So, it's asked us to prove that 2 to the n is greater than 1 plus n for all integers greater than or equal to 2. So, step 1 as always. Step 1, prove the base case. So, our base case we can see here is n equals 2. We're, asking, we're being asked to prove it for n greater than or equal to 2. So, our base case is n equals 2. So, let n equal 2, which implies the left-hand side equals 2 squared, which is 4. The right-hand side equals 1 plus 2 equals 3. So, left-hand side greater than right-hand side, therefore true for n equals 2. Now, I think this is an effective way to lay these types of questions out. Refer to the left-hand side, refer to the right-hand side, and that way it sort of flows a bit better. So, step two is the assumption step. So, let n equal k and assume true, i.e. 2 to the k is greater than 1 plus k. Now, step 3 is the inductive step. So here we prove if it's true for k, then it's true for k plus 1. So the inductive step, let n equals k plus 1. And as with other types of proof by induction, we should write our target expression down. So our target for the k plus 1th term is to prove this here, but with k plus 1 instead of k. So our target from this is 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than 1 plus k plus 1, which is k plus 2. So let's keep that separated off, but that's our target to hit. Now the way we're going to hit this target is by taking our assumption. We've assumed that that's true. So, and this one's a little bit trickier than our proofs by induction. So we're going to write down our assumption first. So we've got 2 to the k is greater than 1 plus k, that's our assumption. And what we're going to do here is do something to both sides to make it more look like our target. So we've got to think to ourselves and think in terms of the left-hand side, what do we need to do to the left-hand side here to turn it into the left-hand side here? Well, notice that we need to times by 2. To get from 2 to the k to 2 to the k plus 1, we times by 2. So we do that to both sides. 2 lots of 2 to the k is greater than... 2 lots of 1 plus k. So we've taken a statement, and this is the really important point here, that we've assumed to be true, and derived another true statement from it. So that implies, if we multiply things out a bit and simplify, 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than 2 plus 2k. So we've got a statement that we've taken from something we assumed to be true, did something to it, so we're going to assume that to be true as well. Right, the next step. The left-hand side looks like the left-hand side, but the right-hand side doesn't look quite like the right-hand side yet. So let's rewrite it in such a way that makes it look a bit more like this right-hand side here. So I'm going to try and rewrite 2 plus 2k out in such a way that exposes a k plus 2. So 2 to the power of k plus 1 is greater than k plus 2, but that's not equal to the line above, plus k. So I've got a k plus 2, and I've got plus a k there. Well, clearly, that is greater than k plus 2. So what I've done, and this is a really, really confusing point, but 
it's one that's the essence of these proofs by induction for inequalities. K plus 2 plus K. Well, that certainly is greater than K plus 2. We've shaved the K off to get K plus 2. But that's only valid when K is bigger than 0. So K plus 2 plus K being bigger than k plus 2 only works when k is bigger than 0 for negative numbers or 0 for that matter it doesn't work but what we've got now here is a chain of inequalities so we know from our assumption and doing a little bit to it that this here is bigger than this we then know that this here is bigger than this so therefore we can conclude that this here must be bigger than this and there we have our conclusion which implies 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 2 as required. There we go. So we've done it. So step 4, the conclusion. So therefore, if true, for n equals k, then true for n equals k plus 1. Since true for n equals 2. Then true for all integers n greater than or equal to 2. So going back just before we finish. The key step here was taking our assumption and doing something to it to turn it into our target. So concentrate on the left-hand side. How do we turn the left-hand side of this into the left-hand side of our target? Well, notice that we times by 2. So if this is true, then by doubling it, that has to be true as well. So we know this statement, or rather assume this statement to be true. If we then manipulate this a bit, we get and simplify it, we get 2 to the k plus 1 greater than that. And rewriting it in such a way that exposes the right-hand side in our target, we get 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than that. But that has to be bigger than k plus 2, because we've taken a k away, a positive k, because I've, I've restricted k to be bigger than 0 in this case. So we've taken a k away, so it has to be bigger than k plus 2. Therefore, that must be bigger than that, bigger than that. So 2 to the k plus 1 is bigger than k plus, two, uh, k plus 2. So it can be confusing just ignoring terms, i.e. this one here, in order to make something smaller so we can say that it's greater than another expression. But you've just got to get used to that. That's the essence of how to do these questions. So putting that previous example one side, let's try another one. So we've got this one here. Prove n factorial is greater than 2 to the n for n being a natural number greater than or equal to 4. So, step 1, the base case, and the base case here is n equals 4. So, let n equal 4, which implies that left-hand side equals 4 factorial, which is 24. 4 times 3, 12 times 2 is 24. The right-hand side equals 2 to the power of 4, equals 16. Therefore, left-hand side greater than right-hand side. So, true for n equals 4. Okay, step 2. The assumption. So, let n equal k and assume true i.e. and explicitly state what we're assuming k factorial is bigger than 2 to the k and step 3 our inductive step so what we're going to do here let n equal k plus 1 And our target expression is 
is this here with k plus 1 subbed in instead of just k. So k plus 1 factorial is greater than 2 to the k plus 1. That's what we're aiming for here. So just put that to the side there. Right, okay. So now let's start by writing down our assumption. So we've assumed to be true k factorial being greater than 2 to the k. Now what have we got to do to get from the left hand side of our assumption to the left hand side of our target? Well we times by k plus 1. So let's times both sides by k plus 1. So k plus 1 times k factorial is greater than k plus 1 times 2 to the k. So simplifying that a little bit k plus 1 times k, so k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 times k minus 3, all the way down to 1, that's just k plus 1 factorial, the left hand side. k plus 1 factorial is greater than k plus 1, 2 to the k. And this is the part that you really need to take notice of. So, k plus 1 times 2 to the k has to be bigger than 2 times 2 to the k. The reason for that, I've timed this 2 to the k here by k plus 1. Well, k here has to be at least 4. So 4 plus 1 is 5. The lowest that this can be is 5. So if I replace the 5 with a 2, clearly this greater than sign holds, because that's 5 times something, at least 5 times something, and that's just 2 times something. So we're allowed to make that jump. And that's the strange thing about these inequalities in that we're deliberately making things smaller just to look like our target expression. So that implies, so I've got k plus 1 factorial here. k plus 1 factorial is greater than this here, 2 to the k plus 1. And I should really state why this is true. Since k is greater than or equal to 4. Right, so we've got our target expression. So as required. So finally, the conclusion step. So if true... For n equals k, then true for n equal k plus 1. Since true for n equals 4, then true for all integers n greater than or equal to 4. And that's that, that's the proof done. So quite a confusing topic this one, but if you really invest the time to get your head round it, it's worth it because if this comes up in an exam, it's a gold mine in terms of marks. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.